All right, so here is the circuit diagram that we want to connect for this part of the experiment. Now, uh, notice that these uh, wires go to channel one of the oscilloscope and these two go to channel two. They are in parallel, so we will leave them to the end and we will connect the main circuit, which consists of the resistor, capacitor, and the power supply connected in series. So let's start with the power supply side and this side is connected to the resistor. So we will take a wire connected between the positive side of the power supply to one side of the resistor that we will use for this part. Now, the other side of the resistor is connected to one side of the capacitor. Here is the other side of the resistor. And here are the two capacitors. Let's start with C1. So we will connect this side of the resistor with one side of the capacitor. Now, according to the diagram, the other side of the capacitor goes back to the power supply. And notice that we have a ground symbol here, which means that this should be the negative of the power supply. And that's why we started with the positive side. So here is the negative of the power supply connected to the other side of the capacitor. Now it's time to connect the uh, two channels of the oscilloscope. So we will connect channel one. I can get a black wire. So channel one is connected across the capacitor. So here is the capacitor. And notice that this is the ground side. So the ground side has to be connected with the ground side of the uh, oscilloscope. And this is channel number one, as you recall from the previous experiment. Now, the other side of channel one should be connected to the positive. Uh, I'm sorry, the other side of the capacitor should be connected to the positive side of, the, of channel one. Now. For channel two, it has to be connected across the main power, which basically goes between the black to the black, and let's tilt this, and the blue to the positive side. And this is the connection for the main circuit of part one. Now notice that for parts two and three, we have to switch between uh, C1 to C2, so we'll have to remove these two wires and insert them in C2. And then after that, we connect C1 and C2 in series, and we will uh, show you a picture of that uh, connection. And also, finally, we will connect them in parallel. Parallel connection is very simple. You just take two wires from C1 and connect them to C2, just like this, two wires. All right, so we will turn the power supply on. Now, as you can see on the screen of the oscilloscope, uh, we already set the uh, signal generator to a square wave. Uh, notice uh, how when the signal generator is at this voltage, this means that the capacitor is being charged. Okay, that's why you see a charging curve. When the voltage of the signal generator is zero volts, the capacitor is being discharged and we see the discharging curve. Now, what we would like to do is to measure the time constant of the discharging curve. So let's zoom in. I think this is a good scale right here. Okay. Now, uh, remember that the time constant is the time required to go from the maximum voltage down to 37% of this maximum voltage. So the best thing to do is to hide this uh, input signal because we're uh, working on the capacitor signal and then turn the cursor function on and use the time cursors. Now we're gonna set the first one, cursor number one, at the beginning of the discharging curve right here, okay? Now, notice uh, that the reading of cursor number one is 1.92 volt and it is fluctuating a little bit because of the noise coming from everywhere. So let's take a single snapshot of the uh, signal. Now it is more stable. Now we have a uh, cursor one at 1.94 volts. So let's calculate uh, 1.94 multiplied by 0 0.37. Uh, 
uh, because remember the time constant is again the time required to go from the maximum which is 1.94 2.37 of this maximum which is if you use your calculator it's 0 0.72 volts 0 0.72 volts okay so i'm going to place cursor number two at the 0 0.72 volts which is 720 millivolts because uh, notice how it is it is displaying everything in, in millivolts and the closest uh, looks like the closest i'm getting is uh i believe 700 millivolts okay so this is the closest to 0 0.72 volts right so we're gonna uh, leave it here and now again the definition of the time constant is the time required to go from the maximum to th 0 0.37 of the maximum so it's the time required to go from 1.94 volts down to 0 0.7 volts the time difference between the two cursors represents directly the time constant which is in our case displayed by the oscilloscope as 180 microseconds. So this is your time constant.